Hey YouTubers, it's Charlie. Thank you everyone that submitted questions for this week's Walking Dead Q&A. Just in general, it felt like there were a lot of questions about Daryl being gay, being not gay. So I definitely added that to the list of questions that I pulled. Usually based on the big WTF moments in an episode, I, I can tell like what people are going to be talking about after the fact, but sometimes I'm a little surprised by questions that people have. Usually they end up being for really funny things, so I always look forward to digging through your guys' comments. I also wanted to say a huge thank you to everyone for 600k. You know, whenever I started making videos, I, I never thought my channel would get this big. Hopefully in like another five years, YouTube won't have burnt to the ground and we're still talking about walkers, dragons, and comic books. So from the bottom of my heart, you know, a sincerious thank you to everyone. You guys are awesome. So let's answer some questions. Careful for spoilers from the episode if you haven't seen it yet. Go for cookie time. First question, Finlay Craig asks, the W and the A, what do they mean? Walker and Alexandrian? So yeah, Sam stamping Rick's hand with the A, that was a little weird. The W just means the wolves, that's what I think. If you remember at the last community, the one where Tyrese died, it said wolves are near. I think that's what the W is. It's just the mark they leave, the scavengers. And yes, I do think that the wolves, those, those people, are the scavengers from the comics. The A, I think, just represents Alexandria, the stamp of the A. The reason Rick chuckled whenever he looked at it and saw that it was an A was because he was remembering the hunters. Whenever Gareth marked it on the church, it was to remind the survivors that they had been stuck in train car A, so he wanted to make them feel trapped like they were trapped in the first episode again. It's nice to know that Rick can chuckle about that given everything that's happened since then. So next question, Rachel Kang asks, why do Rick and the others want to take down Alexandria instead of integrating with them? Also, are we to assume that Jesse's husband is abusive? That's what it feels like. Well, uh, to answer the Jesse question first, so in the clip for the next episode, we see him being like day drunk talking to Rick. So he just seems like he's off the rails in general. Alexandra Breckenridge was on Talking Dead though. She did say at one point their marriage was good, but since the apocalypse, things haven't been very good between them. I am betting that they'll show us some actual physical abuse though. It just feels like that would contribute to this like slow buildup of tension until it explodes in the finale. To answer your question about taking over Alexandria, it's mostly because they feel like the people in Alexandria aren't strong enough to survive. And Rick thinks if they take over, or you know maybe Carol too, that they'll be able to protect everyone better. I think they're definitely happy with Alexandria, like the way that the walls are really strong. It's a fortified community. But I think they don't want to leave their survival up to the decisions of other people. Like if shit goes down with this wolves group, like if they end up being the next big villain, they don't want another repeat of their run-ins with the governor. That would be crazy if we had the same type of finale moment, you know, where like the governor came up with a big group of people in his tank at the gates of Alexandria. Next question, Chloe asks, how do you think that Morgan will make his appearance and when? So there's a couple possibilities. I think he could be found whenever Daryl's out ranging around for people to induct into the community whenever he's looking for new recruits, or he could show up in like some big final conflict. Actually, just to add a third option, he could be walking around with those scavengers. That would be a big WTF. Like if you see this evil group and then surprise, surprise, Morgan is sitting in the background. I don't think that Morgan would be leading them though. He seems too antisocial for something like that. Although Scott Gimple did say that he had been socialized just a little bit since the last time we saw him in season three. But he saw Abraham's map to Washington DC. So even if he didn't go to Alexandria, he is somewhere in that area because Alexandria is like right next to DC. Next question, Spotto asks, who did Sasha see at the start of the episode? I assume you're talking about, you know, whenever she sat down and, and she was like, come and get me. She didn't see anyone specifically. If you're talking about the pictures, though, like she, she was just seeing random people that used to own those homes. I did see a lot of comments about, about people wondering why Sasha shot all those pictures up. I think they just drove her crazy. Like maybe they reminded her of life before the apocalypse or of her family that she's lost. Shooting them up maybe, you know, as like a way to shatter the illusion. I definitely think she expects something really terrible to happen. That's why she went so crazy about the Watchtower. She's like, I know something's going to come. There's no way it's going to be this nice the whole time. Next question, Jadarko asks, do you think that the Alexandrians know everyone is infected? Oh, you're talking about like the virus. So yeah, on Talking Dead, Aaron said that because he he kind of worked in and around DC, he and Eric, his boyfriend Eric, probably had a pretty good idea of it. But I think there are probably some Alexandrians that have no idea. Don't forget that most of the people that live there right now moved in right after the apocalypse started. So a lot of them have no idea how bad things are. They just know it's bad. I think that's part of what's driving the survivors crazy. Like, especially Sasha when she freaked out at the party. Like she was like, don't you realize what's going on out there? There are way worse things to be afraid of. Next question, Demonborn asks, do you think that Rick will tell Deanna about the batshit crazy places they've been, like Terminus and Woodbury? 
I, I don't think that he'll explicitly say, well, we went here and this happened and then we went here and this happened. Like he's not going to write the book of their life. But he did say we've had to do things to survive. So I think Deanna has a pretty good idea that they've done some awful stuff. Don't forget, she's a politician and she won re-election. So she is a genius at reading people. So I think she understood what Rick meant when he said we've done things. That could change, though, depending on who survives to season six and if they're still in the safe zone at the beginning of season six. I mean, I, th I think they will be. I'm really hoping Alexandra Breckenridge's character survives. Like, Rick would probably eventually tell her about those places. Next question, Phil McPhil asks, Do you think that the season finale is going to be a no way out type of thing? Okay, so for people that haven't read the comics, that's a comic book storyline, so I won't explain it in great detail, but I will say that yes, I think what's going to happen is, is they'll take that storyline and use it to bridge the end of the season and the beginning of next season. Next question, Lemonade asks, do you think that Jesse is going to be in a relationship with Rick at some point? Well, I don't know about relationship, like, you know, long-term relationship, depending on how long she survives. I definitely think they'll be having sex, though. Alexandra Breckenridge said this really funny thing. She said when Rick went to kiss her when they were filming that scene, Andrew Lincoln freaked out a little bit because his character has not had thoughts like that, like really sexual thoughts since the beginning of the apocalypse. Like if you rewind back to season one when he found his family again, when he reunited with Lori and Carl, I think he, he was just happy to be with them. He wasn't thinking, oh great, here's someone that I get to have sex with again. That's just not what drives his character. He's been all about survival. But now that things have calmed down a little bit, I think he's entertaining that idea and it's freaking him out a little bit and freaking out Andrew Lincoln as an actor. Next question, Jay Carney asks, is there actually any relationship, like sexual relationship between Aaron and Daryl? No, I, I don't think that there's anything going on there. I think that Daryl is just warming up to the idea of new friends. I'm sure Tumblr fan fiction has its own ideas about what was going on subtextually with all their scenes, but I think that Daryl's slowly starting to trust him. We'll see where that goes. I don't know a whole lot about Eric. We haven't seen a lot of Eric, but Aaron seems like he knows his shit. So it's totally possible that they could keep Aaron on for season six and kill Eric in the finale. I do definitely think some of those new characters are going to die in the finale. But in terms of Daryl being gay, I, I don't think that they're going anywhere with that. They're not going to say like absolutely yes or absolutely no. It's like the Rick thing. Having sex is like the last thing on Daryl's mind. I'll be really interested to see if he meets anyone that makes him change that, makes him reconsider that. But I think that after Merle died and then after Beth died, just a bunch of pieces of him totally died. So he's, he's kind of empty right now. I do think that Aaron is going to help fill a motorcycle shaped hole in Daryl's heart. Seriously, Daryl got really happy when he saw that motorcycle. I think for him that represents something that he knows he can control and it represents a certain level of freedom. Thank you so much, everyone, for submitting questions. These are always a ton of fun to do. Remember, there's only three episodes left, 14, 15, and 16. So I'll try to do something a little bit special for the finale. But if there's any specific bonus videos you guys want me to do, be sure to leave a request. And congratulations to this week's giveaway winner. Let's see, Naruto Uzumaki. I think you're in Japan, so it'll probably be PayPal instead of the Amazon gift card. So be sure to message me on the back end of my channel so I get your contact info. New round of the giveaway whenever I post my next Walking Dead video. Once we get to the finale, I might explain some of the comic book arcs that we've already made it through. For those that are reading the comics, we're around Life Among Them, No Way Out. That, that's kind of like the territory we're in. Oh, and I almost forgot. They actually confirmed some stuff about the spinoff. So there's going to be six episodes in season one, which I know sounds weird. That'll premiere at the end of the summer. What will probably happen is, is they'll use that to lead into season six. So they'll air all those episodes. And then like after the, the spinoff finale, they'll air the first episode of season six. They picked it up for two seasons, though, so there's a guaranteed second season. They didn't announce how many episodes are in that second season, though. I think they just want to test it out to see if people like it. And if it tanks, then they'll just do like another six episodes and, and call it a day. That's actually a good question. Let me know. What do you guys think about this spinoff? What do you think about the idea of them airing it at the end of the summer and using it as a lead in for season six? Would you rather them air episodes like right alongside season six episodes? In related news, while you guys wait for my next bonus video, you can click here in case you haven't seen my, my Carol's Cookies video. I totally love making that thumbnail. That was so much fun. And you can click here for my breakdown of the Game of Thrones trailer that just posted. Totally awesome. Way better than the first trailer. Thank you so much, everyone, for watching. And thank you again for 600K. Now, let's all do the thing 600,000 times.